friends, it's Colleen here. You're going to notice when the episode first starts, we sound like we're in a tin can. We weren't, but there was definitely some audio issues, which we remedy, I promise. But for the first 15 minutes, it's going to sound a little tinny. And I apologize, but it gets better, I promise. Here you go. Hi, freaky friends. This is Colleen. And this is Margaret. And we're the Cousins Weird. We're back. Yay. After a two-week break, here we are together. Because I'm, I'm randomly on my phone, just came up. I have been, I love The Witcher and I love Henry Cavill. I mm-hmm. love, love, love Henry Cavill. And I'm like, how can you replace Liam Hemsworth? Yeah. This picture, I'm okay with it. Oh, wow. He looks really good. He looks very handsome in that picture. He looks a lot like Henry Cavill. I mean, I don't know if he looks like him, but I think the Witcher stuff makes he, him blend better yes, into the I'm like, role. Oh, okay. I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm not as mad, but I'm not it's as still. Mad now. It's still like a little heartbreaking. It's like you should do whatever you need to do to keep Henry Cavill. Keep him. What are you thinking? Oh, well, whatever. I've had a sh- I've had a crazy couple of weeks. And I'm ready to have a day where I don't have to drive anymore. I don't blame you. Well, we we moved our where I work, the spa. We were originally supposed to move by June first, but everything was done early, and then we needed to move by May first. So, right. But like last week, I had planned on the pedicure chair that I want. I want a, a plum three chair, and it looks kind of like an accent chair, and it's like there's a drawer in the bottom. You pull it out, and that's where the pedicure tub goes, right? Cool. So I can have it in my room, and it's not taking up a lot of space yeah. because I have a massage. I have the massage table for doing facials and stuff. So I like I wanted something to not look like a pedicure chair, right? And the one that I wanted originally brand new was twelve hundred dollars, which is insane for nothing yeah. with pipes. Yeah. Right. Just a it's just a chair with chair. a drawer yeah. on the bottom. But there was a lady in New York State selling like her used one it was only a few years old. She's selling it for four hundred bucks. And she's from Fort Henry, which is south of Plattsburgh. Oh jeez. Yes. And I called her and she said she'd take three fifty for it. So my husband and I drove out there and the GPS says it was a three and a half hour drive uh-huh. over four because some of those roads, even though the speed limit is fifty five, you would die. Yeah. They are terrible. And I I judge the badness of a rose on, road on the Moose River Road because that is a road that always made me sick yeah. when I was a kid. This one was worse. Oh, no. Did you get sick? Worse. Jackson did. Oh, no. He actually had to throw up outside. It was, oh, my God. It was awful. Mother's child. And I was just like, oh. I sat in the front, so I'm okay, right? Right. But anyway, it took us just over four hours to get there, and then I had school, and then it took us just over well, three and a half hours to get to my school. I was an hour late because of this added on our right. shitty road situation. And um because you don't think it's not winter, there's no snow. Right. But you still can't drive fifty on a rope that road. curves back in and on itself like the Aswagachi River. It's insane. Yeah. Right. So it's an hour late for school. And then we drove home for an hour and a half. So we were in the car. We got in the car at like nine AM. We were in the car all day. Yeah. What day was this? Tuesday of last mm. week. And then that weekend, I had to move. We had, right. So, like, I spent all weekend moving, packing and moving, and then going to the store and picking up things I needed, and then working and going back. And then after I went to work, still working on shit. Right. <laughs> it's not finished because I had less time than I anticipated having. But, um, so I've been, like, stressed out from the, the stress of the move and all the driving and not having any... I haven't had a day off, like, where I didn't have to go anywhere right. in over two weeks. Yeah, it's gross. I hate it. I hate it. I don't blame I hate you. hate it. I'm like, t- and today I was like, well, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to stay home all day. And then I'm like, oh, shit. Evie's got her glasses in. We got to go pick her glasses up. They weren't open today. So I came out. Where, and they did? They, where do you go? Empire Vision Works. Oh. And usually, like, they do everything's telehealth. Like, mm-hmm. And I thought, like, even though they weren't taking, I didn't think they took appointments today, but I thought they were still open. Right. For fitting up. But nope. They used to be, but they're not anymore. Mm-hmm. And I should have. Ruben goes, Are they even open on Sunday? I go, Oh, yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't need to come out today, but I came here anyway. I'm like, I'm going to be out in town. I might as well come record. Right. You. So, we were gonna, so we don't have to do it virtually. Yeah, we were going to do virtual. It's always better to do it in person. I haven't seen you in forever. I know so. it. It's been weeks. 
because I went to Portland. Yeah. So we couldn't. We did we we did record that Sunday when I was mm-hmm. that Saturday, not evening, and I left that Sunday morning like at three a.m. I was up and leaving, so I was gone. And then we recorded. It was virtually though. Right? It was virtually, and then when I came back, I took my, off and went to. What did I do as my topic? Was it? What was my topic last? Week? I don't remember. Rhinoplasty? No. No, it was after that. I don't even. Remember. I don't remember. And then I went to Tupper Lake for my mom's birthday weekend. And this topic that I did for my terrible trend this week, I texted Colleen and asked if she'd covered it already. She was like, I don't know. It sounds familiar. I go, everything sounds familiar at this point. I know. We're like, we don't even know. I go, well, if we don't remember, maybe other people would either. So if you know, do it, I did the, one the Japanese folklore with a woman who was scared. Yeah. Men. Was that with the teeth blackening one? Was that connected to that one? Or was it something separate? I don't know, I don't Margaret. Half the shit I covered, I'm like, looking back there, I'm like, I covered that? I guess so. I don't remember. <laughs> I, can't remember I can't remember mine or yours. No, I can't either. It's awful. I should remember, but mm-hmm. my brain is at capacity, and I've been losing stuff because mm-hmm. this other stuff has to come in. For That's why I say I can't remember it. things because I have new stuff coming in. How am I supposed to remember that? I can't wait till the end of the month when I'm done with school. You're almost there, I'm Margaret. So You're it. almost there. But then I like have to take my tests. But then I have to like have that surgery at the end of June. I'm just like, and then I'll be bored out of my mind because I'll be home mm-hmm. for six weeks and. And you'll be wishing you're driving. I know, really. I wish I was doing any place but here. Like when you, when you first have it's like, oh, it's nice to not. Yeah, have to worry. Do... And then yeah. a couple weeks in, you're like, all right, I'm done. I'm ready to do something. My brain is mm-hmm. like going places it doesn't need to go yeah because you have nothing else to do mm-hmm. i can't it's like you get to a point you're like i don't want to read anything i don't want to watch anything i don't want to crochet anything else right it's like you don't know what to do right because you like, you've of... been doing everything and you're like sick sick of doing it and you're like i can't any i can't with this anymore you have your i have to you, margaret's ankle doesn't want to work anymore even though right. it got fixed my neck that got fixed doesn't want to do its thing anymore. Right. So we're both falling apart again. I just had my doctor's appointment. By it. Right now, they want to try physical therapy injections, and I have to go see a shoulder doctor because my shoulder's being affected by it, Um, and more scans, so we'll see. Probably both be in surgery at the end of June. Who knows? Who knows? Jeez. Well, we could we could re we can convalesce together. That yeah, would, that, would be, com- that would be more fun than be so convalescing fun. alone. Yeah. But we're just a mess of pair, and yeah. you guys love us for it. Anyway. Anyway, so we appreciate that. But it's been crazy couple, and well, with your schedule, it's like, we can't do it in the week. There's like, no way. I don't get home till 10, 10 30. Right, and then if the weekend doesn't work, then we just, like, well, we have to skip this and weekend. Like, last we just weekend, I, I couldn't, because I was busy trying to move my place. Well, and Margaret was going to record with me that night, uh, Sunday night, and I was like, my neck and shoulders hurt so bad that I am just so not in the mood to I wasn't recording give a quality. You, even though I had not done any right. research, I was just going to record with my episode. Right. Yeah. But I was so like, I knew it wasn't going to be good because I was just miserable. Right. Like, I don't want to do a miserable episode and like force it because it's right. not, what's the it's, point? I know. Exactly. That's not, like, no. we're doing this because we like it and it's yeah. fun. And if it's not fun, then why would we do why it? Why would we do it? And then it would be fun for people listening. Yeah. Nobody would like to listen to us. Me being pissy. Or I say us bitching about them. Well, that's us all the time. Yeah, well, we always bitch, but sometimes that's bitching's fun. You get it out, and then you move on. So it helps. It helps. Then. So we're back together. And you know, by the end of Margaret will be convalescing, so she, I can come to her, go to her at any point and record right. at that point. So at least the, the one bonus of you be convalescing is that you're you're available to record. Right. <laughs> that's the only one. That, that's the school then. Are yeah. You doing, are you working through the I'm summer? working summers, yeah. But I, I'm working um four days a week, so I'll have Fridays off, so that'll be nice. But anyway. Yeah. All right. So we just dabbled. dabbled. You can tell Connie and I haven't been around each other. I know. It's really <laughs> Diarrhea is on some mouths. <laughs> so I talked about going to Portland. And whilst in Portland, I learned that under oh. Portland, it, there's tunnels. Cool. So today we're going to travel back to the 19th century. Portland. I wanted to mention something to Colleen too. I was watching some documentaries about uh, Neanderthals and 
other. Yeah, it was basically Neanderthals. Yeah. Like, it's the secrets of the Neanderthals. It's like a documentary yeah. on Netflix. And a couple of the people were from a country in Europe, but I can't remember which one. And okay. they were talking, and they said, Hearth is here. They said it the way I say it? Yep. See? I'm, I'm just from that. another country. That's right. So what, how you pronounced it technically wasn't wrong. Wasn't wrong. It was just pronounced <laughs> in the wrong dialect. <laughs> Therefore, but I, I wasn't wrong. Like, I gotta tell Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, I was gonna tell you since I've been went to Portland and came back, and I had I'm jealous coffee in Portland. I am ruined. I know. I'm ruined. I can never drink coffee that t- nothing nothing tastes good anymore. Things that I was like, oh, this is good, doesn't taste good. No. I'm like, I'm gonna have to have you order have, it online. You need to get the St. Lawrence Valley Roasters coffee. Mm. Can't. It's so good. I just want to buy Aldi coffee and be happy with it. I know. I'm ruined. I'm but, ruined. But honestly, at Aldi, the coffee you buy from Aldi, it's the organic whole bean in the bag. There's Honduras and Peru. I don't have to get the whole bean. Those are. I have to get a coffee better. grinder. You do. That's really the trick. Yeah, I need to get. You're, a you're not going to find pre ground coffee no. from anybody that tastes good. Right. And I have the little <laughs> thing for my coffee thing, the like reusable. Um, yeah, and thing. I use I, that's yeah. what I use, but I grind. I need to grind my own. It's a little that's reusable thing. And... All right, but I, it's ruined me, Margaret. So I've become a snob, and I, I blame you somehow. Must find some good coffee. Get some downtown coffee. I, I already... Okay, so we're back. We had some audio quality issues. So quality the beginning issues. of this is going to sound crappy, and the rest of it should sound better. Hopefully. And we also somehow stopped recording. It was a whole process, but we're back at it now. So I don't know if we made it into the other one, but what was the name of the coffee? It's good. St. Lawrence Valley Roasters Coffee. Local. So we're just we were just saying that maybe if they really wanted to sponsor us. I would love to have a special... Cousins Weird Roast. Wouldn't that be lovely? That would be fantastic. With our faces on the cover of the bag. It's thecousinsweird at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out at any time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we're ready to the episode. 17 minutes in. We're do ready it. We're ready to, to talk about it. All right. So, we're going to journey back to 19th century Portland, Margaret. Cool. Nestled at the junction of Williamette and... Columbia Rivers, Portland stood as a beacon of commerce and industry. Its bustling waterfront attracted many characters of the past. Strategic location made it a vital center for trade and transportation because the rivers led to the ocean. So where Portland's located, there's river rivers cross act, but the ocean is near there. Cause uh and I didn't realize that Portland and Astoria were so far freaking apart because I really wanted to see the rocks, mm-hmm. but I didn't get to see them because we didn't have a car <laughs> we flew there so yeah but anyway it was a good it was a good place for trade and transportation there's a lot of stuff happening in, at the riverside in portland speaking of um goonies who was your favorite goonie growing up my favorite goonie yeah mouth remember yes. i had the biggest crush on him yes cory feldman cory Fe- i loved him data i love oh, data i've always felt an affinity to chunk <laughs> Loved. I loved all. I'm not like, that I'm a liar. It was more that I was a really clumsy and I knocked shit down. I know. I just hit it to Margaret. She'll break it for you. And I don't think I related to Mouth at all because I was not. I was just probably. Loved him. I was probably a quiet one. Like, what's his face? The main character. What's his what's Mikey. Mikey. I was probably more of a Mikey. Colleen was a Mikey and I was a chunk. But I wanted to be a Mouth maybe. I would be like a smooth character and I just wasn't that. Person. And it's funny, like Data was my heartthrob from that, and my husband is totally freaking Data, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, I just mm-hmm. love that. Like I watch it, I'm like, oh, I married, I married Data, he I did. did, and him now, he's the, so cute, the actor, I love, him he's so, so much. freaking sweet. Like I, I just love him. Anyway, I wish I, we wanted to be Goonies when we were younger. We used to play it. We would, we would outside. We treasure hunt. And, you know, as I got older and watched The Goonies, I went from loving Mouth to loving the older brother. Oh, cause yes. Because Josh Brolin? Holy, holy shit. Holy frig. Hot. So hot. <laughs> but when we watched it, we were, what, 11? Yeah. 12? Yeah. Like, barely had a love map. Yeah. And then <laughs> as I got older, I was like, oh. Oh. The brother. The, the older brother. That's who I need to be looking at. <laughs> yeah. 
But anyway. He's still good looking. He is. He really is. I just want to snap my fingers every time I think about him because he was, whatchamacallit, in Marvel. It snapped his fingers and everything goes to, what's what's the name of the Infinity? Yes. Infinity yes. Glove guy. What's his freaking name? I don't remember. Someone just sent us a message. Oh my god, I name. also loved him in um, Young Riders. I was obsessed with oh. that show. He was yeah. in that. He was Hickok. Yeah, that's right. Wild Bill. Totally forgot about that show. I actually own the season one on DVD. Do you? Because I'm the big dork. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. With cute oh my boys god. in it. That's oh my why. god, I love that. <laughs> okay, back to, back to the episode. So many pretty boys in that show. <laughs> so many. There's very, quite a few attractive young men in, yes. that, in that show. It's like young guns. I used to love them. Yeah. Yep. Oh my god. Balthazar anyway. Getty. Ugh. Okay, beneath Margaret, we gotta stay on topic. Sorry. Beneath the streets and historic buildings lay the Shanghai tunnels underneath Portland. These underground passages of tunnels connect, uh, they're about 150 years old, and they connect the basements of the city's most historic buildings to the river, as well as under Portland's Chinatown. So Portland has a Chinatown, or it's called Old Town, um, and I have pictures of when you go into Old Town, they have, like, very Asian-inspired like arch way with the dragons, the cool, luck, good luck dragons and stuff it. in the front of it, um, where someone had put their uh, one pound of ground beef on the foot of it and left it there, and it was rancid. So I took a picture of that, too, on the dragon. I don't know if there Weird. was some kind of... Like, if it was that purposeful, like, maybe I'm giving a Offering? tribute to the dragon, or if someone just threw it there. I don't know. <laughs> but there was ground beef at the foot of the line when I saw it. Real strange. Um, but um, Portland is crazy because transportation was fantastic. Public transportation. We had free transportation because Head Start paid for our us to have unlimited transportation pass, which was freaking awesome. To find your way around was so easy, so user friendly for someone that never had been there before. We were able to hop on that tram and go anywhere we wanted. Once you knew which trams went which way, you were like set. And the homeless population, I've never been to a city where the homeless population was so big everywhere. Like everywhere. There was just tents on the side of the street people living in tents on the side of the street not one person was panhandling they give a stipend to their homeless wow yeah which was crazy to me and i'm not and it it was very clean and i know for a while portland that was having a problem with homelessness with with the garbage being left and it's not like that now it's very clean i thought but i it was just a very different way of caring for the homeless population and you didn't see panhandling whatsoever no one had signs no one was asking for money no one approached you everyone just yeah. walked and went around their business like it's crazy yeah which was kind of cool it is and it's, it's funny it's like one of those like i remember when we went to seattle like i would have been like i wanted to stay you know what i mean right. it's so nice there mm-hmm. it's like i could live it's here beautiful i would there. be happier and i think portland's even better like, I think for myself personally, right. like, I, I think if I ever visited Portland, I'd never want to come back. But it's like, I want to be by my family. Yeah. But it's one of those towns where you're like, oh my God, I want to live here forever. Yeah. It's just like, I think it, I think it, would it was really cool. I don't know if I want to live there only because I feel like, well, you know what a cool thing about Portland is? You're so still connected to nature there. I like, know. It's, it's like so weird. great. And that's the part that I really liked because we, I mean, seriously, you hopped on the train and I was in Washington Park. Like walking with near redwood trees, like it was friggin' nuts. It was just so cool. But anyway, I digress. Okay, legend has it that these tunnels bore witness to the darker side of Portland's past, mm. where unsuspecting fell prey to ruthless practice of Shanghai. Have you ever heard of Shanghai? Shanghai. Shanghai Noon is a good movie. <laughs> Shanghai is known as, or is known as crimping was practiced pre- prevalently in the 19th century to early 20th century um, in port cities like Portland. They'd steal people. San Francisco, yep. Yeah. It involved kidnapping or uh, coercion. Coercion? Coercion? I, you yeah. know, I can't say words. 
of individuals to serve as sailors on ships, and many of them were going to China. Mm -hmm. Um, In Portland's heyday, crimps, or the people that would get the Mm -hmm. unsuspecting people, prowled the waterfront in the boarding houses and taverns, preying on vulnerable and the desperate. In England, they called them press gangs. They would uh, press you into service. Well, basically, this was human trafficking. Yeah. And it, this like is it, human trafficking, it, hands it, down. It is, too. And it was in, in, in England, too, like, during the war with France. Like, they had press gangs. And, like, they caught you. They just, you'd just, they'd knock you out and you'd wake up on a, mm-hmm. on a ship. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if you didn't mm-hmm. do what they said, they'd kill you as yeah. being insubordinate. Like, I never signed up for this. Yeah, they would matter. Know. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Crimps would use various methods to capture their victims, including drugging their drinks, knocking them unconscious, or outright just kidnapping them. The victims would then be subjected to harsh and dangerous conditions at sea, working as sailors on long voyages with little chance of escape. Some were especially, um, or some were essentially held captive until the ship reached its destination, where they would be abandoned, or either you get left here with nothing or you get back on the ship and work again. Like that was your option. Right. Um, so yeah, completely human trafficking and they were doing it with women too. They didn't talk a lot about, they were, they, it was like forced prostitution happening. So yeah, you were a woman, you wake up on a ship with a bunch of men and you're the only woman on. Board. Yeah. You know Can you imagine? Happen. Yeah. I can't horrible. Even. I would jump overboard. I would too. I, the shark. Oh, that whole thing people are talking about right now about would you, if you were in a woods, would you rather come across a man or, or a bear and women are saying bear and men don't get why? I would face the shark before I'd face the men. Fuck yes. It, a bear is just... A being a bear. Being a bear. Like, you can't... Like, but I guess a man's just being a man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And someone then said... the Boys worst... will be boys, you know, mm-hmm. Colleen. One person said, the worst thing a bear is going to do is kill me. A man, I don't. I don't even want to think exactly. about mm-hmm. exactly. Exactly. I was lost, and a man. I saw a man. I'd stay lost. Mm-hmm. I would be. I would eat pine yeah. cones. So if I was twigs. a woman that got got shanghaied onto a ship, the sharks in the ocean sound better to me. Me too. I would jump overboard. Yep. So there's our bear analogy for this. Right. People, men don't get really mad when you talk about that. That's a real big, touchy subject with some fragile men. Yeah, fragile masculinity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How could you judge all men on a bad, a few bad ones? Like more than a few. There's a reason why girls are taught to self defense and to walk at night with their keys between their fingers, and are told that don't wear anything too revealing because men can't help themselves. Right. Instead of teaching our boys to just respect people in general, we have yeah. to teach our girls to defend themselves against boys. No, I taught my boy not to be that way. And I hope he continues not right. to be that way. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we need to focus on. But anyway. My boy is asexual, so. Yeah. He don't want to talk about sex. He's like, I don't have no interest. You don't got to no, worry about me? I have no interest. He was often associated with other criminal activities, such as prostitution, gambling, and smuggling, and contributed to a culture of lawlessness in many port cities during the time period, which mm-hmm. we know that, like, piracy and all that stuff was, it was, it was lawless in those ports. Mm-hmm. Some estimated up to 1,500 people a year were shanghai That is awful. So what they did was, those tunnels originally were built to transport goods to the basements of businesses from the ports and the river. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. You can get them through without going through the city streets. You could connect business to business. It was perfect. Well, the Shanghai, these bars and taverns and boarding houses used those things to Shanghai. They were getting $50 a head. Per person. Can you imagine being in the 1800s and getting $50 a head? That would be... Like, right now, I want to get $50 for something. Yes. Not for selling some person. I wouldn't sell a person. No. But can you imagine the... How... I don't... I should how look at the conversion. Would be. Yeah, I how attractive. there are people now that would do it for $50. I would... Uh, they probably do. I, they probably do. So, these people that were maybe not so good people who owned boarding houses and taverns started utilizing those tunnels to get someone real drunk, get them through the tunnel to the port, get them on a ship, got the 50 bucks, and they move on with their lives. That is disgusting. Yeah. Two of the famous figures involved in it were Joseph Bunko Kelly and James Turk. So 
Joseph Bunko Kelly dubbed the King of the Crimps. Uh, if you look in Wiki, it, his notoriety reached its height in 1885 when he orchestrated a swindle involving crewmen who, involving a crewman who was placed. Oh no! Let me re, let's start over again. Okay, <laughs> edit that out, Colleen. Okay, <laughs> Joseph Bunko <laughs> is dubbed the King of the Crimps, and on his Wiki, it said he reached his height of notoriety in 1885 when he swindled the captain of a ship by replacing. Basically, they would wrap the people up in, like, some kind of canvas or burlap or something, right, and get them on the ship. He took a cigar store Indian and delivered it to the ship's captain, (laughs) who paid him thinking he was a Shanghai crew member. In one infamous deal, in 1894, he delivered 22 men who had mistakenly consumed embalming fluid from the open cellar mortuary. So he fed them embalming fluid. Dropped him off. He sold all the men. Most they, of them were dead. Right. They didn't know it. They thought they were passed out. 22 people. He got $52 for each man. God. So, Bunko. Bunko. He got the nickname Bunko for, because he played tricks on people. Like, he was he was good at it. And in fact, anyone trusted him after the first time. But apparently, once you kill 22, there's probably another. Well, he, what you should be doing is going finding fresh graves and digging them up and wrapping them in I know. So, like. Instead of killing that would be more fresh ethical. People. Don't kill fresh people. No. Steal the, the freshly dead. <laughs> yeah. One time he set a record for crimping by rounding up 50 men in three hours. And those ones were live. So he got 50 times, what's that, 50 times 50? 5000 $5,000. Can you imagine $5,000 in the 1800s? That's like a millions, I feel like. I don't know. 50 times 50 is it's five. Wait, no, that's 5,000, right? I think yeah, five times five is 2,500. No. Five times five. Five times five is 25. Five yeah. times 50 is 250. 50 times 50 would be 2,500, right? Yeah. 2,500. 2,500. Yeah. So I'm like, that doesn't sound right. There's too many zeros. It's 25. $2,500, which would be a lot of money. Now. Now. But that's a lot of men. But you a lot think of about, that's a lot of people to like finagle. Like, how did he manhandle all those people? And he must have had people working for him. He must have. They probably didn't get anything though. They probably, he probably ended up selling them. Yeah, they're probably the people. Probably. Oh, you're going to help me, but really, he's selling them all. Kelly was never arrested <laughs> for crimping because actually it wasn't illegal. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. He was arrested for murder in 1894. Um, he was convicted on March 1895 and sent to the Oregon State Penitentiary in Salem, Oregon. And he was, but he was released in 1908. So whatever happened, what? he never really served any time. I don't know what the murder charges were. I didn't get deep into it, but the, he should have been arrested for murdering 22 people with embalming fluid. Then is James Turk, another leader in Portland's maritime crime circles. He was known for his ruthless tactics as Shanghai captain. He employed methods of procuring merchant sailors for outbound ships, outbound ships. Young men would find themselves trapped in the depths of saloons that he owned, where a secret trap door led to the uh, captive, like, basically a cage for them. And he'd trap them in a cage. Like, they get drunk, they they open the door floor, they go in, they wake up in a cage. It's like Indiana Jones shit. Yeah. Jesus. Turk, Turk's underground network extended to the docks, where tunnels facilitated a swift loading of captives um, on the waiting ships. One of his son willingly joined his father in the family business, as I say with quotation marks. The other one didn't want to do it, so his father shanghaied him. He spent three long years on ships working because he wouldn't do what his father wanted him to do. So he got shanghaied by his own dad. That's awful! It's terrible. Turk's reputation for brutal brutality was not confined to just legends. The Portland Chamber of Commerce condemned his inhumane treatment of sailors, and Turk's name is synonymous with the introduction of crimping in Portland. So he was like the king of crimping. Like, he he started it in that area. Even the chief of police, Samuel Parrish, had, was forced to quit in 1892. There was a rumor that he had been asked to leave because he had been discreetly shanghaiing drunks out of city lockup and had accidentally shipped out someone important. So that's how he got Booted out of being... Well, regular people was a, was illegal, but if it was an important person, then you're in you trouble. 
I mean, when you're, when some people are just doing their own kids, you know that it doesn't matter to them. It got so bad in Portland that the French embassy filed a formal complaint in 91 and said that French sailors were no longer allowed to go to port near Oregon. <laughs> Jesus. The end of the crimping era didn't come from legal actions, but rather from changes in shipping industry. Labor-intensive ships were fading out and replaced by ones that were steamships. They didn't need as much staffing, enough, enough. They didn't need as many sailors on it to run it. Right. So they weren't needed as much. So it started to decline in the early 1900s when the federal government finally addressed it in 1915 with the Siemens Siemens Act, which when I say semen, I'm like a 13-year-old boy and I laugh. <laughs> I know, I, I'm giggling. Um, the practice at that point was almost obsolete anyway. So, But it took till 1915. But of course, human trafficking has been going on all of time. So it's still happening today in different oh, ways. Yeah. With acts of violence and murder being tragically common occurrences, according to reports, some didn't make it out alive and were beaten, starved, or left for dead in the depths of Portland's underground. So some of them got... Shanghai, but never made it to a ship because they died before they could even get there. That's awful. Um, the tunnels are extremely dark and without light. Hope for escape for, for miles and miles of connecting tunnels was almost impossible. And it's not surprising that these t- these tunnels now are considered haunted. Of course they are. Yes. So this is from the Go- U.S. Ghost Adventures website. When deep within the tunnels, urban explorers report goosebumps and strange sensations that come over their bodies. People have even named one of the tunnels Ghost Sam. Sam is reported as an Asian man who walks quickly past visitors in the tunnels, only to disappear when they turn to look at him. People report that he is the one responsible for turning off lights and connecting bar basements. Sam also enjoys moving items around tunnels as explorers walk by. One guide even heard someone calling out the name Sam over and over again, echoing through the otherwise empty tunnel. Others reported darting shadows and feeling of cold hands touching their shoulders and neck. Eek. Yeah. While Sam is considered to be friendly haunt, others are less happy to be living, less happy that the living are around. Some ghosts in the tunnels purposely trip explorers, pull their hair, push them against the wall, and watch intently as you meander around the dark and the dank halls. While on a guided tour, one guest reported, and this is a quote, we were rounding a corner, and I caught a glimpse of what looked like a seven-foot-tall man hunched over and walking towards us. I figured maybe this was just part of the tour, maybe another guide. No one seemed to notice it. As it got closer and no one else was reacting to it, I began to worry and thought I was losing my mind. As it got within five feet from the group, it lifted it lifted into the ceiling and disappeared. Seeing that, it felt my breath was completely pulled out of me. I still can't explain what it was. And after the tour, I asked a few of the other guests if they had saw anything strange and most just reported sensations of being watched. And one woman had her hair tugged a bit. I'll never forget that day. So this one saw this giant man disappear through the ceiling. Eek. For those brave enough, haunted tours of the Shanghai Tunnel are offered all during the day, of course. It's advised that you come prepared with water and a flashlight and never for any reason leave the group. It would be a shame to end up like the Shanghai men of the past, lost and alone in a haunted Shanghai tunnels of Portland. Now, Old Town Pizzeria and Brewery of Old Town, which is in Chinatown okay, in Portland, I actually went to visit. And it's the coolest freaking old building ever. I didn't have time to do a tour um, while I was there of the tunnels, but the basement of that has part of the tunnels. And it's this old, I'm going to put pictures on Facebook. It's this old building. I sent Margaret pictures of it when I was there. I'm like, Margaret, look where I am. That's so cool. Um, it's named one of the most haunted places in America by US Today uh, in Cosmopolitan Magazine. It was featured on the Travel Channel also. So, so they do tours of the tunnels? Yes. Um, right. It, the cool thing about so old, old Town Pizzeria, the pizza was freaking fantastic. They had a cauliflower crust pizza I can have. Yeah. So good. Like individual pizzas made for you whatever you want but they also are a brewery and they have their own beer and their tap system was a a vintage old tap system the bar was so cool i have pictures of all of it i'm gonna post so cool but um you could tell that place was haunted like you could feel it it felt haunted it was creepy the bathroom was cool it was just you and your boss that went yes and we met this other lady um at the conference and she came with us that night and she was really cool and um 
But the cool thing about there is you do, you book the tours for them. It's 40 bucks, but you get a beer pairing with the tour. So you get beer to drink while you're on the tour. That's awesome. Yeah. Which I can't drink yeah. beer, unfortunately, which I would love I to, but. I can't really drink much beer. But the fact that they do that is really cool. They pair it with their craft beers. Because, you know, Portland's the craft beer capital of the United States. Yes. So if you're going to drink craft beer and coffee, that's where you want to be. I know. We have to go there sometime. I know. You would love it. So uh, from the Old Town Pizzeria's website, it says, Don't be surprised if an unexpected guest joins you for a slice today. A constant present at Old Town Pizzeria is Nina, um, our resident ghost. If you feel a presence behind you or smell a faint waft of perfume, you may have just been received a visit. Nina is often seen in a black dress observing, observing diners and wandering the basement below. Nina's been here for more than 100 years. It was in 1880 that three successful lumber barons built the Merchant Hotel on this block, catering to Portland's nest, or Portland's best patrons. Old Town Pizza sits in the original hotel lobby. So it's super old, but so cool. Mm -hmm. In fact, the window where you place your pizza order is originally the hotel's reception desk and is flanked by the lobby's original decorative cast iron beam post. It's so cool. When you see the picture where you order, it looks like an old ticker, ticket booth or yeah. something. But it's like an old hotel reception area, lobby area. Underneath the floorboards of the Shanghai Tunnel connect Portland's via underground pathways, then used to nab unsuspecting, unsuspecting sailors and transport them to the ship docks to the river and can be viewed during private tours. Old Town Pizzeria sits in what used to be called Old North End, a section of the city with a rather questionable reputation. Despite the upstanding clientele of the Merchant Hotel, even it has been known to offer one of the oldest professions in the world, prostitution. Of course it did, because men be men. Mm -hmm. Perverts be perverted. But hey, if the ladies were making their money and they weren't being victimized, I wouldn't be having a problem with it. Right. But you know those women were not being making the money and not being victimized. Right. Um... A legend goes, one of the young working women was Nina, sold into this life by a thriving white slavery market. In an effort to clean up the neighborhood, traveling missionaries convinced Nina to share information in exchange for freeing her from a fate she did not choose. Nina cooperated, but soon after was found dead in the hotel, now Old Town Pizza. Thrown down the elevator shaft, Nina is reported to have never left the building. Could it be Nina who carved her name in the brick of the old elevator shaft? Now the backdrop of the cozy booth in the rear corner of the restaurant. So the elevator shaft, you can sit in and eat. They made it into a booth. And I have pictures of that. It's like a reserved spot. You have to reserve it. But we sat right outside it. So I have a picture of that. And her. And there's a name carved in the side of it. Yes. Um, rich in history, Old Town Pizza was founded in 1974 when the Ak Akurati family opened the doors and now legendary Portland's landmark. The lobby of the Merchant Hotel was transformed into the hippest pizza joint in town. And let me tell you, it is fucking cool. <laughs> Generations of Old Town Pizza loyalists remember the restaurant as a bustling hangout for leaders of Portland counterculture scene in the 70s. Actor William Defoe was a regular at the time and could usually be found oh. lounging on a couch in the mezzanine. There's a mezzanine. Um, the Portland Trailblazer superstar Bill Walton was known to ride his bike to Old Town Pizza where he would order his usual a large vegetarian pizza with a pitcher of Henry's beer. He would often bring his teammates with him and said to have closed the place down more than once. You could book a tour there and explore the 14,000 square foot of the underground Portland, learn about Portland's dark history, and hear stories of our resident ghost, Nina. And you finish it up with three tasters and a, one pint of our internationally award-winning beer. So... That place was fucking cool. I wish I had time to do the tour. We just didn't. We just didn't have time. We didn't enough time there because we were doing work stuff also. But that place was freaking cool. The food was amazing. The atmosphere was amazing. The pe the bartender was fucking awesome because I did get myself a dirty martini when I was in there, and he it was a mean dirty martini. I was really thrilled with it. <laughs> and he was a su super cool dude. The guy at the bartended with an olive, right? Yeah, yeah three, three, three olives. Yeah. Today, the Shanghai Tunnels are used mainly for tourist attractions for people exploring. Um, you can travel the underground and see the holding cells, once used as prostitution rings, as well as the trap doors. The Shanghai 
Shanghai girls would drop people through, which are still functioning in some bars. And although no one should explore the tunnels by themselves, there are many tunnels that have collapsed over the years, and some tunnels lead to nowhere. Northwest Port, uh, Northwest Port Paranormal Investigations have declared the Shanghai Tunnels to be the most haunted place in Oregon. Uh, for those interested in the creepier side of an already creepy place, the Cascade Ge- Geographic Society offers the Shanghai Tunnel tours in addition to standard heritage tours. So you can you can go to the haunted, or they have like a historical tour you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and another fun fact is that the Shanghai Tunnels are often referenced in the TV show Grimm because it's takes place in Portland. So they talk about the Shanghai Tunnels a lot in that TV That's show. That's cool. Which I've never seen Grimm. Me either. Which I might start watching. After knowing... I didn't know it was took place in Portland. Like, that's where it's filmed and stuff. So, that's the story of the Shanghai Tunnels. And I'll post all the pictures I took when I was in Portland on our page. Um, and I really wanted to do a haunted tour so bad, but it just, it just wasn't enough time to do it. But we did get to go to the pizzeria, which made me happy. I did not run into Nina... Not that I realized, anyway. She, was she didn't make herself appear to me. There were people going on the tour. Um, I took a picture of the door that led to the basement, and it did not come out clear, no matter how many times I tried to take a picture of it. It was blurry. I think Nina, maybe she was standing in front of it, like, making it so I couldn't get a picture. I don't know. Um, and the alleyway next to it is fucking creepy as hell. It's all, like, board, like, all, like, caged up. You can't get into it. Yeah. Um. It was cool. It was cool. It was a fun trip. Fun. And I was like, well, I was here. I have to. Like, I learned about the tunnels and stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to do an episode on the tunnels because that's a good cousin's weird topic. Totally. And I had pictures of the place I that part of it happened in. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Very cool. You know what else is cool? This coming Saturday, yes. the cousins are are going to be at the Wellness Cottage in Watertown. Their their stores on Pearl Street. It's the old. School building on Pearl Street, which is haunted, friends. Yes. Um, we're going to be there for the metaphysical fair, which is going to have um, several. There's going to be a medium there. There's se- several people, are several tarot readers there. There's going to be vendors. And the Cousins Weird are going to be there. We're going to be there. We're I doing a live episode from 2 to, at 2 o'clock. Somebody... We just moved into a new building that was built on land, mm-hmm. right? My business. And one of the guys, I don't know if he was doing electrics or plumbing or something, told one of my coworkers that it's haunted. The land? Yes, because he said that he's driven by when nobody was there and seen a face looking out of the windows. Oh! On more than one occasion. And I'm like, oh, that wasn't my room. <laughs> Is that my room? <laughs> Maybe they're nice. Maybe. But he said that he he's pretty sure that he was like, that's there's, cool. there's some kind of thing. We really that. have to like team up with the paranormal investigator, local ones, and like go with them on a hunt. Because I would love to do that and get it like a what are those machines called? The EV, EV? EMF EMF machine. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm really bad at ac- what is it, acronyms. The, the... Electromagnetic frequency yeah. machine. One of those. Yeah. An EMF reader. Yeah. I want to yeah. get one of those. Got it. Anyway. If you would like to reach out to us, mm-hmm. you can reach us through instant from direct message through Facebook or Instagram, or you can send us an email at thecousinsweird at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you, especially if you're St. Lawrence Valley Roasters Coffee. And, <laughs> and you want to do a Cousins Weird Brew anything because it's our favorite. It's my favorite coffee. I love them so much. Um, but yeah, so. Even if you're not them, you can still reach yeah. out to us. We'd love to hear from What's you. What's your favorite coffee to drink? Let us know. And what yeah. creepy stories do you want to hear us do next? We're on Facebook and Instagram for with the Cousins Weird Podcast. We would love to record with you. We if would you love have to record with a you. spooky story you'd like to share with us, reach out to us and let yeah, us we'll know. Yeah, we'll do a live We're interview with you. We're compiling names of people we'd like to do an episode with you. Yeah, we'll collab so with you. You can be a guest on our episode. Um, we can do it virtually. We can do it in person. Whatever works best for you. Yep. So, yeah, reach out to us, please. Make sure you're following us on both Instagram and Facebook so that you can uh, see the pictures we share on those. Uh, every time an episode comes out, the the cover art gets shared for the episode because we do different art for every episode. Um, and if and this is a segue into Patreon, if you're a Patreon, you can download that and it's yours to have our cover art for every episode. The collector's edition. Yes. 
So patreon.com backslash the cousins weird for a dollar a month. You're a freaky friend. You get bonus content and a, a free sticker for $5 a month. You become a terrible trender bonus episodes, a free sticker, ad free episodes. Why is my brain just, not... Oh, you download graphics from their episodes and, uh, occasional meet up with us. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing because my brain just went squish. I think, <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's it. I think we're good. Stay freaky. Bye. Bye.